So I've seen a couple of videos, and uh, Captain Mike was one of them, on how to press a square bound book. So I'm going to give this one a shot and see what I've learned and uh, take you along the journey. So try one out and see how it goes. Stick around. So we have a square bound book here. Uh, it's an X-Men annual number 14. First, they say cameo appearance again, but some people say it's the first regular appearance. Whatever. What I do know is that it's in desperate need of a pressing. And even with a pressing, it's at best going to be in 9.0. And I'm happy with that because I bought this just as an experimental book. What I was most concerned with was that the book, the square bound edge, was still pretty square. Um, because I wanted to experiment. And yes, there's other square bound books that I could experiment with, but at the price I got this for and the potential that I could get for it, it was worth it. So a couple of things that you have to try to remember when doing a square bound book is two main factors. One, when you're pressing a regular book, you pretty much, you just want to press the whole book. On a square bound book, you don't want to press the spine. Um... You want to try to get all the wrinkles and everything else out as good as possible, but the spine itself is supposed to be square, and if you put too much pressure on that, it'll round it out, and it kind of kills it. The other thing is that these books are not held together with staples. They're held together with glue. <laughs> so what you have to do here is not just you have to control the pressure near the spine, but more importantly, you have to control the heat. So uh, I usually set my heat around the 145, 150 range. I'm going to bring the heat down on this to about the 130 range. And we're going to check this with the temperature gun and everything. And we're going to do this step by step. So let me stop this right now so I can start getting set up. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we're figuring out the thickness of the spine itself. Now, there are different ways of doing this. Uh, I like to be, a, stupid me, super precise. So I use what's called a veneer cal uh, calipers. Okay, I have a Minitoyo one it's digital. But you can actually get one at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's for... Uh, I think it's like 20 bucks. They, this one's a more like a three digit one. I use it for work. And what I'm doing is I'm checking the thickness of the spine without squeezing it, just until you, you see the number. And I'm getting 153 and 153.153 .153 of an inch and 0.148 of an inch here. So five thousandths difference here in the center. Uh, what I did though now is I took one of my backing boards and I cut it into strips. And now um, I'm going to be squeezing this a little bit. And I got this down to 160. And if I take one of these pieces out, it comes down to 138. Now that's where I have to, I, I really want to try to keep it as close to this thickness as I can. Um, because I don't want, I don't want to put any pressure on the spine. I want the spine to stay as free as possible um, and get the pressure on the pages and everything else. So I'm going to leave that piece in there which is putting it at about 160, so it's eight thousandths of an inch thicker than my spine, which is about three to f about three times the thickness of a human hair. Let's give you an idea. So now let's start setting it up in the heat press. All right, I'm recording this a second time because I forgot to put the microphone closer, <laughs> so I couldn't hear anything. So uh, I've got my book set up in the uh, press. I have, what I'm gonna do now is check my temperature. I'm using my gun. And I got about 135 degrees. I don't want to go any hotter than this. Now, on my particular press, it actually says 95 degrees. Uh, I found out a long time ago, the hard way, that my thermostat is not, uh, it's off by 40 degrees. Um, it's fine as long as it's consistent, which it is. But I still check my books every time anyway. So, I've got my cut strips. And I've got one board in, in the center of here. And I'm bringing my cut strips over and putting them directly up against the spine, as close as I can get them. Okay? This is very important because you want to try to make sure there's no pressure on the spine itself. You don't want to press the spine. You're trying to press the rest of the book. Okay, then I got my next board, which I make sure there's no dust or anything on. Do both sides. It just takes an extra second. Make sure that you have a good, clean board. If you have any grain, if you get a grain of salt on or sand on this and you don't realize it, you're going to press a little divot into your book. 
So put it down nice and carefully. On when you're doing these square bounds, you have to be very, very careful because you've got a lot more pieces in there that you could accidentally move. So I covered it up with my Teflon sheet. I'm going to come over and close my press. Now I've got my press. It didn't press that hard. It's just I'm, I'm not lefty. My press has springs, so basically it's going to level towards the side. It's not going to. Oh, it's not going to try to force itself against the um, the cardboards that I have there. It's going to find the the common spots and and you know lower itself down. And I'm glad for this because. Uh, I make sure that I put my spine on the outside, and that's how I, pre I press my pages more than my spine. Um, I got this as a t-shirt press off of eBay. Um, does a very good job. I'm sure that there's better ones, but for what I do, this is fine. The only thing is you have to make sure that your thermostats, thermocouples are set correctly. Now, I'm going to make sure that uh, I keep this on for about a half an hour, and then I'm going to come over and turn off the heat, and after 24 hours, because I, I let it press for a while. After 24 hours, I'm going to open it up and we're going to pull it out and we're going to see what it looks like. <laughs> and uh, for you, this will be a second, but for me, it's going to be 24 hours. Okay, so we're going to open it up and take a look and see what we've got. Da -da -da -da. Turn our little pen off to the side. It's not hot anymore, so I don't have to worry about that. That gets out of the way. I'm seeing it now for the first time. Okay, it still stayed square. It stayed square, so that's great. I'm gonna take it out nice and easy. And, okay, let's see what we got here. It helped a bit here. It had that, it had a really bad indentation along, along this edge, but it didn't get it completely out. But the rest of the cover looks really, really, really good. Um, as you can see, the squareness here. I'll try to turn this a little bit so you can see. Get this in the center. Say, so, hey, right here. Well, it stayed square, which I'm very happy about. I'm going to bring it over. Back edge looks really good, too. It, uh, there's still your imperfections along this edge. So I had to keep turning around and looking at the screen to find out how far off I am. But you've got the, you've definitely got spine ticks here, non-color breaking, but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe. Um, got your, some damage that was over here on this edge. This was from before the press. But I did get definitely better to, than where I was. I'm going to stop this and turn this around. Okay, so I got exactly what I expected to get, okay? Um, it, I was able to get some of the defects out. I did not get it as well as probably a professional presser, obviously. But let's be honest, this was the first time I've ever tried doing a square bound. And it stayed square. I, the one thing I forgot was to bring my calipers back home from work so I could check to see what the thickness was after. That would have been really nice to know. But uh, judging from the thickness of the cardboard that I put there, um, it doesn't feel like it got any thinner at all. Uh, so, again, you want to make sure that the cardboard pieces that you are putting up against the edge are just as close to the size of the book already as possible. Maybe even a tad, really just a, like a tiny finger bump thicker. Because you don't want to put any pressure on that spine because uh, it's, it's, it's basically, it's going to do this. And once it starts rounding, it doesn't look right. And that's one of the things we love about square bound books is that it's square. The other thing is temperature. That is so critical when you're doing these because they're not held together with staples. You're de not just dealing with the inks and the papers, you're dealing with the glue. So 133, 135 was the temperature that I used and it got the desired results and the glue, I checked the pages and everything is good. So um, I don't know if anybody's ever gone up through the ranks of the temperatures to find out where you're, you know, this is the point where it melts, but I'm also sure that the glues through the ages changed okay the glue that they use to hold together 
Silver Surfer number one back in, what was that, 74, 75, is not the same as the, what they used on this book, which was 1990. <laughs> um, the, glues, the glues definitely changed. So watch your temperatures, watch your pressures, and you can still improve. I would say that if I judged this book before pressing, I would have put it at a 6.5 to a 7. I didn't expect it to be a high grade. It's why I paid low so I could learn, and you can learn. And I would say that I have a good shot at an 7.5 to an 8. So maybe uh, a 1 to 2 grade bump. Nothing major, but a bump is a bump, okay? Any bump that you get, especially when you can do it with your own press, is fantastic. Um, I'm going to wrap this up, get on to the next video. Remember to join, uh, uh, register for the 500 subscriber. I'm going to make sure the link is here. Hit 500 subscribers. You know, click on the link. Make sure that you're a subscriber, that you like, and comment on that video. And when I hit 500, you, uh, we'll be giving away Venom Annual number 1, Kate's and Stegman signed. Okay? Until then, though, until the next video, which it will be in about five minutes, I'm out.